It's over. Flake and Collins release statement on FBI report leaving Schumer's office stone-faced. The Democrat shenanigans seem to be coming to an end according to Red State. As the Democrats pulled every dirty trick in the book to make sure Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh was never a Supreme Court justice, the Democrats' time has finally run out. Investigation after investigations now seems to be coming to an end as the seventh FBI investigation has come back with nothing damning against Kavanaugh. So Senator Mitch McConnell has now called for the vote to confirm Kavanaugh to be held tomorrow. And as most of us who know McConnell, we know damn well he wouldn't be calling for a vote if he didn't have the votes already. Siren, Jeff Flake tells us there is no additional corroboration in the FBI file. Agrees with Collins that it was thorough. And the best part is that the two most famous Republican turncoats, Jeff Flake from Arizona and Susan Collins from Maine, are both agreeing with McConnell that there is no reason to keep stalling this vote. Judiciary Committee Democrats all filing out of Schumer's office. All stone-faced. Kelsey Snell. Here is more via Newsweek. Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh may have secured the needed votes to join the highest court in the land following comments made by Senators Susan Collins and Jeff Flake after they reviewed materials from the FBI's supplemental investigation into claims of sexual assault made against the nominee. Collins said the FBI's investigation appeared to be very thorough, while Flake told reporters, We've seen no additional corroborating information on the assault allegations made by Christine Blasey Ford and Deborah Ramirez. Senator Collins says it appears to be a very thorough investigation. She plans to go back and read the full report later. Jeremy Erb Flake leaves briefing on the FBI supplemental background investigation saying he plans to go back and read more of the report, but says he saw no additional corroborating information. Frank Thorpe v. If either statement results in Collins and Flake casting yes votes for Kavanaugh, the current vote tally as of Thursday afternoon would stand at 50 to 48 just enough for the federal judge to take a seat on the country's most esteemed court. If the three remaining undecided senators were to vote no, a tie would turn the matter over to Vice President Mike Pence, who would break the tie in Kavanaugh's favor and deliver to President Donald Trump his second Supreme Court appointment of his first term. The vote on Kavanaugh was largely expected to fall along partisan lines, with Collins, Flake and three others serving as the deciding votes. Currently, Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat up for re-election next month a state that Trump won handily in 2016, and Republicans Lisa Murkowski and John Kyle have yet to state publicly how they intend to vote. Senator Heidi Heitkamp of North Dakota, who faced a similar predicament as Manchin, announced today ABC that she planned to vote against Kavanaugh despite the bad confirmation process. Manchin may vote no, which pushes the tally to 50 Republicans for and 49 Democrats and two independents against Kavanaugh's confirmation. Kyle who took over for the late Senator John McCain, was expected to cast a yes vote for Kavanaugh, so he should be counted in the 50 potential yes votes. In that scenario, Murkowski ultimately would stand alone. The FBI was tasked by Trump after Flake insisted last Friday that the agency investigate the accusations of sexual assault made by Ford and Ramirez. On Wednesday night, the FBI handed over the results of its interviews with nine potential witnesses to the Senate. Senators were then allowed to review materials in a secure area. Democrats and Ford's attorneys have criticized the FBI's investigation, claiming the White House limited the time and scope of the probe. Even as the FBI investigated the allegations, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was vehemently pushing for a vote to confirm Kavanaugh. The Kentucky Republican filed cloture, or a move to end debate, on Wednesday, setting up a potential final vote on Kavanaugh for as early as Saturday. As you can see, this nightmare brought on by the Democrat Party is now almost over. They accused an innocent man of doing awful things, and let's hope they pay a price for this come this November and in 2020. In America, we are innocent until proven guilty. But it seems like now you are innocent until proven Republican. And most people are smart enough to see this. Although the Democrat Party had a slight edge in the November midterms at one point over the summer, they have now lost it. And that's not a great place to be for the party that after giving us a joke like President Barack Hussein Obama and losing over 1,000 seats nationwide was hoping for a stunning comeback. A comeback which they thought people wanted since the celebrities in Hollywood think they speak for the people at large. This all goes to prove how out of touch the left really is. Maybe it's time they do what President Trump did. Go out and talk to real people, the unwashed masses, not the Alyssa Milanos and Deborah Messings of the world. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe.
Thank you.